Hello and welcome back everybody to The Last Rep. I'm Bob Chickerall along with Peter McGuff. Peter, when we last left, the inevitable unfortunately happened. The legend himself, Bob Kennedy, has died. Yeah, Bob passed away last uh, Thursday evening, April the 12th. Even though we'd been pre-warned that his illness was terminal, it was still a terrible shock when it happened. He was a giant in the industry and, and we'll all miss him. Well, I understand he had his family and friends uh, surrounding him at the time of his death. And, um, it, you know, we, we can't speak enough about the importance and the impact that Bob Kennedy made in the bodybuilding world, uh, obviously being in the publishing business for some 30 plus years. Yeah, he, he started in the 60s writing articles for British magazines and even Joe Weider's Muscle Builder Power. He was born in England, moved to Canada in 1967, and then in 74 decided to start his own magazine, Muscle Mag. Um, which is 38 years ago, which really makes him the longest established publisher in the business now, who still owns the business or still owned the business. Sure. Well, Bob yeah. is certainly a throwback. Uh, like you mm. say, you know, Joe Weider, who we uh, still have around, but obviously not in the day-to-day -day operations of the, mm. the magazines now over to AMI. Mm. Um, Bob Kennedy, a, a, a true throwback, you know, to the old days, but it just, wasn't, just wasn't the world of muscle. Bob had many publications out there yeah. uh, that we know of. Yeah, I mean, he was an out-and-out -out bodybuilder as a kid, as a teenager. He would hitchhike 100 miles to London to see the Universe show. He would try and find, you know, shops, newspaper shops that sold the magazines in those days. They weren't peripherate. He told me an interesting story once. I asked him, why did you call the magazine Muscle Mag? And he said, because every guy looking for bodybuilding magazines would walk into a newsagent and say, where's the Muscle Mags? <laughs> so he thought, well, if I say Muscle Mag, the newsagent will say, here it is, it's here, the Muscle Mag. Well, you know what, mm. uh, there's uh, lots of, of genuine thinking when it goes into that, but very yeah. simplistic, really, when you think about what you're looking for. I'm looking for yeah. a Muscle Mag. Yeah. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. But, you know, he, he expanded the empire, obviously, into uh, reps, you know, and a lot of yeah. the books that he puts yeah. out, Oxygen Magazine, yeah. uh, and even into uh, other ancillary things like uh, he actually has a food magazine yeah. uh, and, and plenty of others with his uh, wife of many years, Tosca Reno. Definitely. I mean, he's got five other titles apart from Muscle Mag. Um, published dozens of books, um, even had a chain of Muscle Mag stores, you know, up until That's right. sort of 10 or 12 years ago. So in many ways, with his, his output of the words and the books, he, he produced more books than any other publisher in this business. Maybe Bob reached many more people than, than most of the other publishers because of this proliferation of copy that was going out there all the time. He even did uh, annuals at one time. Well, you know, one thing I'm going to miss about Robert Kennedy, uh, Peter, is that every year I would see Robert at the Arnold or the, or the Olympia, that type of thing. And mm -hmm. First of all, Robert had the distinction of being the only other person than my mother and my sister that called me Bobby. <laughs> uh, and uh, But, you know, we not only shared name, but he had such a great sense of humor. I think that's what I'm going to miss most about Robert Kennedy. Yeah, that, that was the thing about Bob. You know, he, he's... He always maintained this sense of humor, this sense of fun. Um, even if he was in a heavy discussion about the sport or the industry, he would pepper it with witticisms and never took himself too seriously. Um, was always willing to laugh. And that's the thing you, you'll miss about Bob is, is the humor and the gentle nature that he had. Oh, yeah. Not only did he love the sport of bodybuilding, but yeah, his sense of humor was second to none. I mean, he always had a joke. Uh, you know, always would bring up just different things, yeah. you know, anything really not really even bodybuilding related, but yeah. you know, he just had yeah. that sense of humor. And I assume it went all the way back, Peter, to the early years, yeah. uh, because you can see it even in his early writings that he never really took yeah. anything too serious, right. but had a yeah. lot of fun with it. Yeah, I mean, my, my first interaction with him personally, I was working in England with, for Bodybuilding Monthly, a magazine, and I did an article on Tom, Tom Platts, and I was told, you should send that to Muscle Mag, they'll probably uh, publish it. So I rang Robert Kennedy, Transatlantic, big deal in those days, got through to him. Um, I said, you don't know me, Mr. Kennedy. My name's Peter McGough. And he said in that distinctive voice, I know you, my boy, you know, because <laughs> he'd already read the article, yeah. you know, and from the, he opened doors for me in the beginning. He was always a mentor, supportive, gave me good advice over the years. And that, that went on for the last 30 years. Right now, we're going to go to a video tribute, courtesy of our friends at Muscle Mag and Oxygen Magazine in tribute to the great, the one and only, Robert Kennedy. Head up just like you were for plenty of energy in those eyes. Beautiful. You look pretty fancy in your 
Yeah, I'm sure I do. Workout gear. <laughs> well, I'm here because I just want to show my Arnold Schwarzenegger watch. Okay, it's the biggest watch in the world. That's all I care about right now. Is if you want to buy it, so yeah. five grand. Never mind the precious daughters I was just talking about. Never mind that. It's hilarious. Uh, are you telling me that you guys wore new thongs? No. That's what we're wearing. Oh, underneath everything. Are you wearing yours, though? Absolutely. I'm watching your video today with a thong in my heart. Oh, my God, I can't splattered. You can see it any day. Thank you. Good the word is meow. Okay. So let me know. One, one, four. Thank you so much. MD Supplement Superstore, ah. number one. Hydrolyze Ultra, the leader in cellular hydration water, has been designed by shrinking and reshaping molecules to allow a faster and more sustained delivery into your cells, along with adding electrolytes to our special ingredients. This allows all nutrients to be absorbed at a maximum cellular state. Get the advantage that top athletes have achieved. Try Hydrolyze Ultra today. Visit HydrolyzeUltra.com. Hydrolyze Ultra. Exactly. As our English audience knows, in bodybuilding, you need bottle. There it is. Well, we've got a couple of right here. Peter, it's off to L.A. I just returned. The L.A. Grand Prix was the place to be this last week, and it was definitely the place to be for the competitors as 350-plus filled the auditorium over in Culver City, California, and 1,500, a first-time sold-out event and venue wow. for John Lindsay, super promoter. Well done, John. How about that? 1,500. There was 1,500 seats. He actually sold standing room only. Yeah. That's the first time he's actually done that with all the shows he's produced, not counting, of course, the USA. Yeah, well, if I know John, he would have been trying to sell seats on the sidewalk <laughs> as well. Um, uh, and he did, yeah, a little cheaper. <laughs> but uh, Men's Physique Pro Show in L.A. Uh, did not disappoint, obviously. Mark Anthony winning the show, Peter. The Roman guy. No, not the Roman guy. The other Mark Anthony. J. Lo's ex. No, not that guy. M Melvin's brother. Close enough. <laughs> uh, Mark Anthony came out there, and uh, he wasn't Roman, but I tell you this, <laughs> he was working that stage boy left and right, and it, when the smoke cleared, uh, he was declared the winner. He could not have been more thankful. He actually handpicked that show as a tribute to John Lindsay as he earned his pro card at one of his shows. The um, pro women's physique, however, would be an entirely different deal as 15, 16 girls actually converged in L.A., uh, for this competition, the deepest and best lineup so far that we've had. Mm. The interesting thing about the women's physique, Peter, is we've talked a little bit about it in the past, is it's eclectic makeup of the girls that are in it. Not just ex-bodybuilders, but we've had a fitness girl now in it, uh, Olympian for that matter, yeah. uh, and a figure girl, Sarah Hurley, who ends up winning the show, her second pro victory in the women's physique. Yeah, I think this is going to become a characteristic of, of these divisions, the, the women's side. There'll be transitions from figure 
forward and transitions back from bodybuilding and everybody will find their own level and it's uh, it's great for everybody to have a class that they feel comfortable in. Very much because what you're seeing is some of the girls who didn't do particularly well in figure are now doing well in women's physique mm. uh, with Patricia, Patricia Mello in second place who arguably could have won the show. I believe it was only a one point difference between those two girls but she actually got her pro card in figure as well mm. and she's not small. She's a taller girl. Uh, definitely has a little bit more muscle to her, but I thought, and personally, I would have given her the first place vote. Nothing against Sarah Hurley, who also looked phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, but either one of these girls really displayed every criteria that the women's physique offers. And I hear they're really enjoying themselves with the posing routines and everything. Oh, the, the posing routines were phenomenal, Peter. I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking about the creativity is much broader than I've seen because it's a mix of everything. It's not bodybuilding per se. So the girls, I think, feel a little bit more open to for interpretation. Right. Uh, Michelle Blank, who did very well at one of the earlier shows, the St. Louis Pro, uh, yeah. also from the Olympia fitness background, and she may go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but you're seeing elements of dance, fitness, posing, bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. Sabrina Taylor, who ends up in third, ends up uh, putting $500 in her pocket mm -hmm. uh, with the award for best posing routine. And uh, Stacey Simons and Karina Nascimento rounding out with, with number four and five. Stacey Simons, a multi-Olympia... Uh, competitor, Peter, in fitness. Yeah, and she, she used to try and bend over backwards to, to, to win the fitness Olympia. Remember the contortions she did? <laughs> well, if you've ever Tremendous. seen Stacey Simons, what Peter says is true. <laughs> this girl can actually bend herself completely backwards. I mean, we're, mm. one of those moves where you kind of cringe and you go, man, yeah. how's she going to stand up and walk? Exactly, yeah. But she yeah. gets it done and she did yeah. it great. And yeah. uh, Karina Nascimento, one of the very first Women's Physique Pro show in uh, Arizona earlier in the year, a um, little tougher competition here, and uh, you can see where that's been upgraded significantly, uh, but did her best and, and still ends up in the top five, a former bodybuilder on stage. Yeah, a very interesting name, Nascimento. I spoke to her years ago. She has the same name as the greatest soccer player the world has ever known. That's Pele from Brazil. Uh, his, his surname was Nascimento as well. Ah, so it always uh, struck a chord with me. Well, that's kind of interesting mm. because so Pele is not his real name. No, they, they Brazilian soccer players take another name and just have one name. It's like a nickname. It's probably the only country that does it. Sometimes Portuguese do it, but hmm. yeah. I've got to take your word for it when it comes to the world of uh, exciting world of soccer. Well, Peter, the, is, the uh, viewers will tell us if we're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they often do. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got to. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, one of the female bodybuilders, Chris Murrell. Um, who won the USA bodybuilding title yeah. just a few years ago, um, never competed as a pro. I don't think she really liked the direction that female bodybuilding was going. So women's physique came up, and this seemed like a perfect match. Unfortunately, uh, despite her efforts, didn't fare too well here down in the last call-out. But I yeah. can see the progression of where she's coming from, yeah. and I still think this is probably a good division for her. But like a lot of the top female bodybuilders, Peter, it's going to take a little bit more time to trim down to what the criteria calls for in women's physique. Yeah, I think with the women's physique, maybe have more chance to make an impact um, because they do get the chance to promote the personalities on the posing routine. And it's a new class for a lot of, lot of women who just weren't up to sort of getting into that heavily muscular look that's in female bodybuilding. Absolutely, Peter. Well, we'll keep an eye on the women's physique division as well as the men's physique division, both making a splash in the world of the NPC and the IFBB. Peter, when we come back from the break, we're going to be previewing FIBO coming up this week all the way in Dusseldorf, Germany. I train with Max. 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 Do you?
welcome back everybody. So Bob, uh, first time for a few weeks, we've got a, a men's pro show on our hands. I hear you're jetting out to the FIBO in Essen, Germany this weekend. That's right. Uh, from Fort Myers to Dusseldorf, FIBO is in effect once again. Only the second year a pro show has actually gone on there. i got to be honest, Peter, this is not the deepest lineup I've ever seen in a show. No, it's amazing. We, with the new rules and qualifications, uh, I think everybody was thinking these kind of shows guys who had a good chance of qualifying for the Olympia would would pile in there. Um, Pre-contest favorites, probably Johnny Jackson and uh, Michael Kefalianis, I would think. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> I mean, I did not see a lot of names on there. I mean, there's some names I've never even heard of, and I'm the athlete's representative. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to be a lot of rookie debuts, but... Um, yeah, Johnny Jackson, I mean, I would think that this one's already penciled in his name yeah. uh, if he just shows up like Johnny Jackson. And, and i got to be honest, from some of the pictures I've seen, he actually looks better now than I've actually seen in the last two, three years. So we we may see kind of an early preview of what Johnny Jackson has, not for this show, but maybe a, a next show that he's in. Yeah, Johnny keeps improving. Um, his upper body is, is world-class, chest, traps, arms. It's always been the structure of his legs, but he's made improvements there. So let's hope he makes a breakthrough this year. All right, well, we're going to introduce a brand new segment this week. We're calling TLR Remembers. Peter, where are we going back to? We're going back 20 years, 1992. This very month, there was two guys training for the pro debuts. Uh, one Ronnie Coleman and one Kevin LeBrody were, were entering the Chicago Pro Invitational. Wow, at 20, I can't believe 92 was 20 years ago because I was yeah. competing back then uh, as an amateur still, of course. But uh, the Chicago Pro turned out to be a great show. Porter Cottrell... Heading up yeah. on top of that one. Yeah, he, he won in a bit of an upset. Everybody expected Lebroni to win. He'd red hot come in from the Nationals the year before. Um, but he, he, he got his conditioning a bit off. Um, after that, I don't think he ever lost to Porter again. But the interesting thing is, we looked at Lebroni in that contest and thought, this guy could be a future Mr. Olympia. And he never was, but there was a guy in 11th place who we never even thought would, would get into the Olympia, never mind win it. That was Ronnie Coleman in 11th place. Wow. <laughs> so, boy, how uh, things changed mighty quickly there. So Ronnie yeah. Coleman, a relative newcomer yeah. uh, then, obviously, as he just turned pro the year before, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That was the much yeah. talked about to this day yeah. uh, national uh, championships of that year that yeah. I was in. Yeah. Uh, still regarded, Peter, as the most competitive national show of all time even till still today, no show has eclipsed that uh, with names like like Paul DeMeo, Flex Wheeler, uh, Mike Matarazzo. Yeah. Um, of course, yours truly yeah. was in there. Ronnie yeah. Coleman, who was uh, just yeah. ahead of me. Uh, Matt Mendenhall. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chris Cormier was in yeah. there in sixth place. Edgar Fletcher. I mean, you can see these names. Everybody was in this show in this class. Ronnie, yeah. of course, going on to win the world championships. Yeah, Ronnie was was you know not seen as uh, as going to be a great pro. It was five years before he started to really win the shows. In fact, the 1997 Grand Prix Tour, there were seven shows on it. Leveroni won the first six, and then the seventh, Ronnie won. We're talking about rookies making their presence in the IFBB in their debuts, and we've got one coming up that's also going to make a splash. Lots of talk surrounding him, but the New York pro is vast approaching. And making his rookie debut, and a guy everybody's talking about as a possibility to win it all. Steve Kukolo joining us now live via Skype. How you doing, Steve? Doing great, Bob. Good to be on. Well, it's great to have you here, bro. Uh, live via Skype. You just got back from your guest posing in Colorado. Now, I issued you a personal challenge in Colorado. Maybe you can tell everybody about it. Um, well... Usually when I'm on stage, I like to play to the crowd a little bit, and if they're kind of dead, I like to pump them up somehow, you know, whether I'm, I'm kind of pointing at them or, or, you know, waving my arms a little bit at them. And, um, it, <clears throat> so your challenge to me was to not use my arms in any way to pump up the crowd. <laughs> so um, I did everything I could. I mean, of course, it kind of messes with you because it's, like, uh, it's like when if you repeat a word all the time and somebody calls you out on it, you start trying to be conscious of saying that. So I was conscious of not using my arm, so it was kind of, it sat in the back of my mind, but I did as best I could. I think I succeeded. I think you did pretty good, bro. I'll, uh, I'll still get you that first hamburger after the New York Pro, but uh, yeah, you can see the challenge was uh, no no uh, ear, hands to the ears, uh, no begging for applause, and, and no raise the roofs. Uh, and so you, uh, I, but I seen three, four times when you were tempted, man. I saw that finger pointing out. I was getting ready. I had I had the arm kind of like pumped, like it was ready, but <laughs> lock and loaded. Well, you uh, you answered the challenge, my friend. The big question is: is the big challenge 
is coming up in just a few weeks where you're going to be making your pro debut at the New York Pro, uh, obviously in the Big Apple. New York, New York, how are you feeling about it? I feel good. I feel good. Um, you know, things are starting to hurt a little bit, so I know, um, I know I'm know i starting to get where I need to be. I mean, every year you kind of just wait to that, that painful moment where you're like, oh, the diet's really starting to hurt and I feel like crap, and that's when you know you're starting to look good. So, Honey dropped the hammer on me um, about two weeks ago, and we're really uh, pushing hard, so... I feel good um, as far as where I'm at. Just got to keep pushing, you know, pushing, and, and uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, for those who don't know, Hani, of course, is uh, Hani Rambod, your trainer, uh, one of the super gurus out there to the stars. And how's he feeling about your progress and your chances uh, so far? Um, Hani is, uh, Hani will never say you look good until you win. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, uh, you know, he, he, he's, he sees where we're at, I'll say that, and then um, he, he sees the changes and the things we have to improve on. Um, we've made some good progress this offseason in uh, bringing up my chest and back. Um, it's going to be you know, a, a continual thing through my career to, to constantly improve. I feel that you always, there's always room for improvement, but um, personally I feel that it's, I have an improved uh, physique from the USA's, which is, um, was our goal, is you know, obviously to bring a better package. We're going to bring the same condition, and it's going to be exciting. Well, it definitely will be exciting. Uh, New York, as you well know, Steve, very unforgiving when it comes to the pros. I don't care whether you're making your pro debut or you're a 20-year veteran. They will let you know what they think almost right off the bat. You think you can win over New York? <sighs> I have every confidence in myself that I will be able to um, <clears throat> walk on stage uh, bringing my best that I could hang with any of those guys and let my lines and, and um, you know, just, just beat them. I definitely want them to be worried about me, be thinking about me, and knowing that, you know, they're going to have to bring their best in order to beat me. So I'm looking to looking forward to getting on stage and, and, uh, and bringing it. Well, Steve, the, the history of the New York Pro, especially as of recent, is that rookies have fared very well. Ruli Winkler winning his pro debut, along with your buddy Evan Senapani winning his pro debut. Obviously, I know it's your goal to follow in their footsteps uh, what do you think about your chance of actually winning the show, or is the goal to merely place in the top three? Where are you at? My goal is definitely to win the show. It's not to come in top three. And, um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of great guys doing the show, a lot of guys I competed with in the past. So um, it, it's kind of exciting to step up uh, to the next level with those guys and to be able to get on stage with them and see uh, who's really worked their butt off the most and made the most progress. And, and I feel that if I walk on stage, I mean, I feel like I win the show. See, we've talked about this before, but uh, should you be so fortunate and win your first uh, rookie show, uh, would that put you in a position to enter the Olympia this year, or are you going to be one of those guys that kind of takes a look at what's happening and we don't see until next year? Um, you know, we'll definitely evaluate with, with Hani, but I think, you know, my, my envision and, and my dream is to get on Olympia stage and, you know, coming off off a, a win and, and feeling good about it and feeling that if we have a little time to improve anything we need to before the Olympia, if we can do that, um, I think we're going to give us a shot. Well, Steve, uh, taking the unthinkable, of course, that you don't win this show, does that put you mm -hmm. in a different perspective as to what the rest of your season looks like? Meaning, will we see you on stage at one of the additional shows, perhaps one of the Europas uh, or even Tampa, or uh, is that something that doesn't make any difference either way? Um... You know, I'm, right now, definitely main focus is New York and kind of not trying to think ahead of that. Um, if, if you know, all goes, you know, different than what's planned, I think we'll definitely take a step back, reevaluate what we need to do, and, and, and I probably will step on stage again this year considering that, um, you know, if, if it's a good placing and if I'm right there, uh, you know, I feel that we'll go to, we'll go to the next show and win that one. All right. Well, I'm sure you and Hani will definitely be strategizing as we uh, – Bear down with only a few weeks to go until the Ides of May roll in. And, of course, the New York Pro vastly coming upon us. So, Steve, best of luck in your first show. And uh, I'll be there, of course, on the microphone. Hopefully it'll be your name that I'm calling out as the winner. Looking forward to seeing you there, Bob. And uh, definitely super excited about it. And I thank you for having me on here. Um, you know, and <clears throat> got a great team with Muscular Development and uh, Evergen behind me. So I'm, I'm ready. All right, buddy. We'll see you in New York. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. All right. Well, we just heard from the man himself, Peter, Steve Kuklo, throwing his hat in the ring at the New York Pro. Can he keep up the tradition of a rookie winning the New York Pro? 
Well, if anybody can do it this year, it's going to be Steve. I mean, he's got tremendous potential, only 26 years of age, uh, great proportions and shape. He's got all the muscle groups. He just needs to come in in condition, and it could be his. Well, listening to Steve, he certainly seems to be wise beyond his years, Peter. He seems to have his mind firmly set in a good place. He has a great team surrounding him with, with Hani Rambod as his trainer, um, and he also has a full-time job, something you don't hear a lot about these days. That's correct. Not very many bodybuilders, pro bodybuilders, can carry that off. Um, well, look, we're coming to the end of the show. Last week I had the last word about, I brought up the rear, as it were, about men's <laughs> rears. So we're going to go to a commercial. When we come back, Bob, you will have the last word. MD Supplement Superstore, number one. Hydrolyze Ultra, the leader in cellular hydration water, has been designed by shrinking and reshaping molecules to allow a faster and more sustained delivery into your cells, along with adding electrolytes to our special ingredients. This allows all nutrients to be absorbed at a maximum cellular state. Get the advantage that top athletes have achieved. Try Hydrolyze Ultra today. Visit HydrolyzeUltra.com. My last word today is on the length of shows and the people complaining about it. It's no secret that the numbers of competitors has continued to climb as we're quickly approaching the magical thousand mark at the national shows. It's also quite evident that shows are substantially longer. As a result, I've heard many a complaint about having to sit through hours and hours of bikini girls, men's and women's physique presentations, and of course, bodybuilding routines. In light of this, I have come up with a solution to the problem. Get up. Move. Unless somebody duct taped you to their seat, why would anyone feel compelled to sit through endless hip swings and quarter turns? Go visit the booths. Pick up some free samples. Tweet the world about your next important function. It's understandable that you can't please all of the people all of the time. Just keep this in mind. While you're rolling your eyes at the bikini babes, working the stage with three snaps up in a Z formation, the fans are OMGing at your boy's fifth most muscular pose in a row, and Hulk, Hulk Hogan-esque hand to the ear, brother. And that's my last word. <laughs>